Hello everyone. This is Dr. Mitesh Gala. Welcome to Rough Book, a learning companion. Hi. We are getting into rational irrational number exercise 1A, the first chapter and the first exercise. So before you begin or before we begin, a simple instruction. Always pay attention to the start of the video. That's very very important because it is going to give you the crux of the entire exercise and then you can try and go ahead on your own. So basically rational irrational number before getting into it let's get into the parent of all the numbers so all our numbers basically or broadly categorized into two parts part 1 is imaginary number and part 2 is real number now what do you understand by imaginary and what do you understand by real so any number that you can highlight on a number line that you can show on a number line So zero, I can show one. I can show two. I can show minus one. I can show. I can even show decimals. So all these numbers are called as real numbers because they can be shown. But the numbers which you cannot show on number line are called as imaginary numbers. For example, if I take something called as negative four ka root, this I cannot show on the number line, and therefore this will be called as imaginary number. So remember, all numbers which cannot be shown on number line are imaginary numbers, and the ones which can be shown are real numbers. Now we are not getting into imaginary numbers. All imaginary numbers are negative within the root, okay? And real numbers. Now real numbers are further bifurcated into two parts. Part one is rational number, and part two is irrational number. so the name of the topic itself is rational and irrational basically both of them together are called as real number that's what we are going to work on in this particular exercise so now what are rational what are irrational number so any number that can be represented in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 then it is called as rational otherwise you call it as irrational basic examples 5 is a rational negative 4 also rational because these are all 5 by 1 negative 4 by 1 both are integers and denominator is not equal to 0 even minus 3 by 2 or 2 by 4 all these are rational numbers now what are irrational numbers so let's say root 4 now here root 4 what is happening is this is not an integer because it's under the root and therefore it is irrational no sorry root 4 can be written as 2 so this becomes rational sorry wrong example root 5 or root 7 or root 29 all these are irrational even root 3 by 2 irrational why because this is not an integer so three basic rules rule number 1 it should be represented as p by q rule number 2 both should be integers and rule number 3 the denominator should not be equal to 0 it can be positive it can be negative no problem okay so rational numbers further bifurcated as integers whole numbers natural numbers all these are rational and the rest is all irrational together form as real real and imaginary together form as set of numbers now do you understand the entire tree of numbers so let's work on rational and irrational with exercise 1a with whatever understanding we got Is zero a rational number? How many of you all say yes? Yes, zero is a rational number. Now, why is it a rational number? So, are the three properties of rational number being fulfilled? Property one, it should be represented as p by q. Property two, p and q both should be integers, and property three, q should not be equal to zero. Then it is rational. Let's see how. So, can it be written as p upon q? Yes. How so zero upon one, which is equal to p by q. Are p and q integers? Yes. Zero and one, that is p and q, are integers. No problem at all. And further, the last part is q e not equal to zero. Yes, because q is equal to one, and therefore q is not equal to zero. So since all the three conditions are there, therefore it becomes a rational number. So you say therefore zero. is a rational number do you understand now so whenever you want to say whether a number is rational or no these three properties should be followed okay let's go on to the next one sum number 3 i'm not getting into true or false i'm sure you can manage it on your own 
Uh, there are some numbers you have to write them in the ascending order. So you take the LCM of all the denominators that is 9, 12, 3 and 18. So I hope you know how to take the LCMs or number together and then find their LCM. So in this case I guess the LCM should be uh, 36. Okay. So therefore minus 5 by 9 will be dashed by 36. So 9 4s are so negative 20. 7 by 12. So 12 3 times. So therefore 7 3s are. And then 3 by uh, sorry the next one minus 2 by 3. So 36. So 3 12s are so 24 out of here. And 11 by 18. So again 36 is 2 times so 22. So therefore ascending order will be the smallest to the biggest so this is the smallest negative 24 by 36 then negative 20 by 36 then 21 by 36 and 22 by 36 so actual ascending order is going to be negative 24 is negative 2 by 3 20 will be negative 5 by 9 and then 7 by 12 and finally 11 by 18 so that's our final answer for the ascending order Further, they want to write, find out the difference of largest to the smallest. So, difference of largest. So, largest is 22 by 36 minus the smallest. So, that is 24 by 36. So, basically minus minus plus. So, you add them 46 by 36, which is going to be a dividing by 2. So, 23 by 18. They further want you to write in a decimal fraction up to one decimal place. So 18 divided by 23. Let's actually divide to see what do you get. So 1 times 18, 550. So 2 times 36, 140. So I guess uh, one minute. I'll have to put a decimal here when I got a zero. So now 18, I guess seven times. Seven eights are 56 and 120. Nine uh, eight times eight eights are 64. Eight plus six 14. So seven times. So 1.27. No need to do this further because you just want one decimal place. So 1.27, so decimal place will make it as 1.3. Do you understand now how to do it? Exactly same as sum number 4 with a descending order. So all on you now, without my help, pause the video right now and try this on your own. Okay. So LCM, pause the video, don't cheat. Okay. So LCM of 8, 16, 4 and 32 is 32 itself. So therefore, 5 by 8 will be dashed by 32 so 4 times so therefore 20 minus 3 by 16 so 32 2 times so negative 6 then minus 1 by 4 so again 32 8 times so negative 8 and 17 by 32 remains as it is so therefore descending order so I think 1 see you have got 1 2 3 and 4 correct so which is the smallest negative 8 then negative 6 then 17 and finally 20 so actual descending order will be negative 8 is negative 1 by 4 1 uh, negative 6 is negative 3 by 16 17 is as it is and last one is 5 by 8 oh this is ascending order we wrote no we have to write it in descending order means ulta my bad so this is ascending you don't need this actually so descending order directly I am writing 5 by 8, 17 by 32, negative 3 by 16 and negative 1 by 4. That's my final answer. Okay. Now finally what do they want? Sum of largest and smallest fraction. So sum of largest that is 5 by 8 plus minus 1 by 4. So my LCM is going to be 8, 5, 4 1s are 2s are so 2. So it should be 3 by 8. Write this up to two decimal places. So when I divide this 0 point, so let's divide actually 8 by 3. So 0 0.30, so 3 times 24, so I will get 60. 7 times 56, so I'll get 4. Go one more decimal place, okay? Because 2 decimal you want, that means go to 3. So 40 means 8 fives are, so 0 0.375. Up to 2 decimal places, 0 0.38. Had you not gone to the third one, you would have got 37, which would have been wrong. Okay. So go to 3 and then convert this so you get 0.38. That's what should be your final answer here. This we made a mistake. Please don't do that. This is ascending. They wanted descending. How many of you all got it correct? Brilliant. Let me know in the app. Yes, the app rough book. I'm sure you are enjoying this app. You're getting the most of it. Tell all your friends. Let everyone get benefit of it. 
The last part, sum number five. They say whether this is terminating decimal or no. Terminating means what? For example, if you have two upon five, and when I divide it five by two, zero point, I get twenty four times twenty, and you get the answer as zero. So when your remainder becomes zero at any point, you call this as terminating. Okay. But for example, one by three. If I divide three by one, zero point ten. So three times nine. Again one. 10 so 3 times it becomes recurring now it keeps on going until infinity it is never going to stop such are called as non terminating decimals okay so now how will you identify without actual division so if your denominator has multiples of 2 and 5 only then it becomes terminating but if there is something beyond 2 and 5 then it becomes non terminating for example 7 by 16 so it will become 7 by 2 raised to 4 So all twos and therefore terminating. So that is your first one. Do you understand? One twenty-five. We know one twenty-five is five into five into five. We are not bothered about the numerator. So you write over here twenty-three by one twenty-five, twenty-three by five cube, and therefore non-terminating. Nine by fourteen we know is two by seven. So write over here nine by fourteen, nine by two into seven, and therefore non-terminating. Do you understand it? Great. Come on, fill in the rest. Pause the video. Come back once you finish. Thirty-two by forty-five. Forty-five is three times fifteen. So thirty-two by forty-five will be non-terminating because it says thirty-two by three into three nine into five. Therefore, non-terminating. Then forty-three by fifty. So we know forty-three by fifty is going to be two into five into five. So that is only two and five. So all twos and fives. Terminating anything apart from two and five non-terminating. Okay, seventeen by forty. Again, it's going to be here. Why? Because forty is basically two into two four eight into five. So non-terminating. Then sixty-one by seventy-five. Seventy-five has three in it. So sixty-one by seventy-five. That will be three into five into five, and therefore non-terminating. One fifty also has three in it. So one two three by one fifty. So I can say one two three by three into fifty. Fifty is two into five into five, and therefore non-terminating. So do you understand? Only twos and fives in the denominator terminating. Anything apart from two and five non-terminating. For your homework, I want you to try sum number four and five again, so you get good advantage on this exercise. The next video I'm going to make on one B, and you will get a good hand on it. I hope you are enjoying all these videos. You are spreading your word to all your friends in your school. There is a referral code policy also. Connect to us, and we'll help you to understand that as well. So let's make the rough book family as huge as possible. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, pray for everyone, and be honest. Bye. Hope you had a lovely mathematics experience with the rough book, our learning companion.